Hey, what's up out there online community? And thanks for stopping by and checking out another segment of Straight No Chaser, where we talk sports and culture for fans, all the times with the fans. Now tonight I've got a guest that I've been trying to get on my show uh, for quite some time now. A shout out to Big Francois Wright for making a connection, making it happen. Um, I'm very excited to talk basketball with former NBA player, big three star and Chicago basketball icon, Paul McPherson. Shout out to Paul McPherson for joining the show. Sir, my brother, appreciate the platform, man. I appreciate the love and support, man. Man, no doubt, no doubt. Now, this is a conversation that a lot of people have been waiting for. I had a lot of questions that have been forwarded to me. We're going to have some people tuning in and that are going to be <laughs> asking, um, you know, different questions. They might even give you a little ribbon, but it's always love in the shot. It's always love for the shot. And, uh, we've got guys that are tuning in from all across the country. So before we get into it, we're going to do as we always do. It's customary. We're going to raise our glasses. And before we get into it, we're about to get into it straight no changes. Salute. Salute. Cheers, brother. Yes. Well, you know what? You definitely show and prove. Um, because as you, as you continue to play in high school, you know, you, you got better. Your name started to ring out. Let's fast forward. Senior year, you know, you're ranked in what, what class? Was, what, what was your graduating class? I graduated in 1996. I was, the, I, was, I was Ronnie Fields was player of the year. He got in a car accident. Um, it was a kid named Michael Robinson from Peoria Central. Yep. He ended up replacing Ronnie in a McDonald's game, ended up going to Purdue. I was the third best player in 1996 in Illinois, and I ended up having to go play in the Magic Johnson round ball classic. I never got to play in the McDonald's game, but um, man, my senior year, I, had, I felt like that was as close to me arriving as I could have did with what I had, I almost transferred to, to King. Like one of my good, good friends was a point guard at King at the time, a kid named Larry Alloway. Yeah, yeah. And I, I hung with him every day, man. I, I was this close to transferring to King. <laughs> I had met with Cox, I had went and got my transcripts and, and I always wanted to go to King cause like they uniforms and they had all the shoes, they had all the sneakers, like they came in with Letterman jackets. Like, that just felt like a real team, man. I went to South Shore. We digging through crates for Mitch Mac shoes. We don't got Reebok. We got Reeboks and King got Nike. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, I almost went. But I, I toughed it out and stayed in South Shore, man. And I, I was glad I did because it helped me, you know, be able to have my own team, be able to do things that I wouldn't have been able to do at King or had I transferred anywhere else. Yeah, and I think that's the, the pro and con of the, the pro. That's one of the pros and cons of of, of your situation because you can go to a story school like King or even potentially like a Simeon, you know, you didn't have that. You weren't known for, for playing for one of those powerhouse, quote unquote powerhouse schools, but you carved your own legacy at South Shore. So South Shore is synonymous with Paul McPherson along with some of the other guys that have come out of South Shore, Matt Irvin, That's Reggie. Crazy, like man, that. that like to think of all the people that went there and went there and like, People think basketball players from South Shore and they think me. That's that's just crazy, man. The irony of that. It's crazy. Yeah. So fast forward, you say you were in the, in the Magic Round Ball Classic. You weren't selected for the McDonald's All American game, but talk about some of the guards that were just ahead of you on a national level. Because I don't think people really grasp how good you were and how good that class was. That class was tough, man. Some of the guards, the point guard was Mike Bibby, was 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 the first team point guard for the class for that year. There was another kid right behind him named Shaheen Holloway. Went to Seton Hall. Yes, sir. Coach, McDonald's All-American. He was tough, man. Like I said, at the two, you had Ronnie got in an accident. So he he missed the he missed the McDonald's game his senior year. But of course, Kobe, rest his soul. Uh Steven Jackson. It was a kid named Shea Cotton. Shea um, Cotton. It was it was just talent, man. It was it was a lot of talent at the shooting guard position. It was a kid named Renford Walton from Michigan, from Detroit. Yeah. It was a lot of kids that was tough, man. And, and I remember all of these dudes to this day still, because I consider myself, you know, like a basketball almanac, a student of the game. Like I know people and who was ranked over me and who was good and, and I kept up with people and everything. So the wings was elite then, you know what I'm saying? There was a lot of guys that could play, man. Everybody was athletic. so. You know, by me coming from a small school, I didn't go to no Nike camps. I didn't do none of that. So I had to take kind of a back seat to those people until we got to the college or until JUCO or whenever the next step from college was, you know what I'm saying, to the next time where we could compete. 
but I always had confidence and I always believed in myself, no matter what anybody ever had me think. And see, that was one of the things, even though you weren't as recognizable on a national level, and even sometimes here in the city, the one thing that, you know, just even seeing you before I knew who you were, I'd see you out and about, I'm like, who is this big barrel chested guy? I mean, you just ex exuded confidence and you had a presence, you know, so that, that goes a long way in helping you become better, but then also in your matchups with individuals, not so they don't take you lightly because you're not this this name like the other guys, but you're still a force to be reckoned with. You know, so that was huge. Yeah. I was I, I had learned from kids earlier, like when I was young, I learned from a guy named Tony McCoy and, a, and another legend in Chicago named Brian Leach, who passed away. But these were two guys from my neighborhood who like tasted almost tasted pro success. Like Leach would go at it with Tim Hardaway. Tony McCoy and Michael Jordan became great friends, but they first was rivals battling at Chicago State Pro Am. So me being 10, 11, 12, going to watch these dudes play and then them taking me under my wing, it didn't matter that I wasn't ranked nationally by Taylor Bell or that I wasn't in the Sun-Times because my local neighborhood heroes looked up, looked at me like, man, this kid going to be something. So that's all I needed. And once they got me to working me out and, and people saw that one-on-one, -on -one, I was a problem. Like I was super physical. I was quick. I was strong and I had a 50 inch vertical so I could like get anywhere at any time. So once I started to see that that worked against pros, against college players, against playground legends, I wasn't really never worried about, you know, what people thought about me. I just wanted to go out and prove wherever I went that, that I leave my mark and that, you know, you would know I was there. We know